Greg O'Connell joins me. He is a Shark Week marine biologist. He is featured in Shark Island. He has some innovative ideas that could make it a lot safer and less terrifying to go back in the water. Craig, welcome. Thank you very much for having me. I love sharks. I'm fascinated by them. I swim in the ocean. I surf. They don't really scare me unless I'm swimming by myself. But what is it about Carolina that uh, we've seen so many shark attacks? Are humans more delicious? It's, <laughs> I wouldn't put it that way. It's a, it's a really interesting situation there. I think what we have is the perfect combination of variables. Maybe it's the, the warm water. Maybe it's the increased salinity. And maybe it's all the bait fish along the coastline that could be bringing these sharks closer to shore. So you say there could be runoff. The, the water is saltier. Sharks love salty water. And they're just taking bites out of people. And you also say that because, you know, there's a difference in length, some five-footers, some eight-footers, that these could be different species. Yeah, it could be different species. And, I mean, the other thing, we have to think about is that it's it was just a holiday weekend school just got out and there's a lot of people going to the beach so more people in the water could increase the probability of these encounters all right so you work on a show called shark, shark island which is reunion which is off the coast of madagascar yes. it's a tiny itty bitty little island where a couple of my friends were in a plane crash oh, yes. and they, they both lived which was crazy it was that crash where the plane was hijacked and it flipped over in the water insane so anyhow <laughs> there have been seven deaths there in four years i don't think there have been seven deaths in california in like 200 years. Yeah, it's, it's a, a really interesting situation over there. It actually was a situation that, that changed my life. What happened? Um, you have, um, typically when scientists do their research, we, we focus on the problem. Um, but because discovery really let me investigate, I actually was exposed to a lot of different people, not just scientists, not just conservationists, but people that were also very angry with the sharks. Mm -hmm. And so they, you know, they told me that they want all these sharks dead. And it really gave me the opportunity to talk to them and say, you know what, these sharks do play a really important role here. And we need to find something that we can do to allow these people to get back in the ocean, swim, use yeah. these waters so that they can coexist swim, with these sharks. Swim, fish, do the yeah, stuff that, just, that humans are meant to do in yeah, shallow water. Exactly. So it's, it's really... Uh, it was a really interesting situation. I met all these people. I see what they're currently doing and, and how angry these people are. So, so they're they killing need... sharks. I mean, they, they fear them. And you know what? Rightly so. If I saw seven people die in four years in a tiny place where I live, I'd want to do something. But you came up with an idea. Tell me about the magnets. So uh, sharks are very unique from uh, a lot of different animals because they have this electrosensory system. And what we actually learned is that you can expose a shark to a very strong magnetic field, something orders of magnitude greater in strength than what they're typically encountering. And this will overwhelm their electrosensory system and deter them. So we basically used that concept, combined it with uh, this big visual system in artificial kelp forests, wow. and we created what's known as a shark safe barrier, which is a really promising technology. And better than the shark nets, because yes. turtles and dolphins die in those things, and that's horrible. You don't want other innocent marine life yeah, to perish. You don't want sharks to die just no. want to protect people yeah that's something that we need to recognize is that these sharks play a really important role in the ecosystem yeah and when you do have these attacks it's unfortunate well, we can't blame the sharks we're stepping into their environment right. and we need to recognize that's that. where they live yes they're doing their thing yes. are they the lions of the ocean well yeah typically and you wouldn't go into right. the serengeti and just walk around without the safety of a, a jeep the thing we need to understand is that sharks aren't targeting humans they don't have a particular taste for our blood so mm. there's plenty of people that have and, and they've come out alive and i've taken them shark diving during those particular situations and they have left you ever the water. bitten a shark have i no have you ever been almost bitten multiple times do you kind of want to be bitten a little bit i have been bitten actually on, on my hand i have this nice little scar did on you my like hand. it no, it hurt. Okay, I'm just <laughs> curious. I don't know. I don't know if it's like liking the pain from no, getting tattoos. It was, it was, it was terrible. But um, again, I was, I was working with the sharks. I was manipulating them a little bit. Yep. I couldn't blame the shark. It was my own fault. I don't blame the shark. I don't blame you. I love what you do, Craig O'Connell. I will be watching Shark Week, Shark Island, the whole thing. Thank All you so right, much yeah. for being here. Come yeah. back and let's talk more about sharks because yeah, they're fascinating creatures. Yeah, thank you for having me. Let's save them and ride them.